Well, thank you, everyone. I'm Jonathan Watanabe from the Skag School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. And the talk title I have today is uh, Not Letting Them Fall. So who is the mysterious them that I'm talking about uh, as a pharmacist? Uh, they are the rapidly growing senior population in the United States that we see exploding both here and you're seeing that in Western Europe, but it's even more accelerated in, um, in good parts of Asia. And what we're trying to do at UC San Diego Health Sciences is find creative means, one of our programs for seniors, is find creative means of reducing the risk of falls. And not only just trying to reduce the risk, the number of falls, but also reducing the risk of preventing the fear of falling. And we've already found that that fear is rapidly, massively consequential in terms of the anxiety that seniors have towards falling and the limitations they have once they've had a fall. And so if we can free people from falling, there's, a, there's tremendous things that seniors can do. And I could try to illustrate that and describe it, but I'd rather just show you. So this is uh, Harriet Thompson running through the streets of San Diego, because I know you guys will miss it, not being down there, so I want you to see it. That's a 92-year-old woman. So this is when she set the record in San Diego, mind you, running not far from where I live, uh, at 92 years old, becoming the oldest woman to run in a full marathon. Um, and she can't do that if she's afraid of falling or if she just had a fall. And that elation and that excitement that can't be generated if she has this nervousness of, of about taking every step. And in fact, she actually has... Um, leg injuries from, uh, she's a two-time survivor of, of cancer. And in fact, she started running at age 76. So she's running 17 marathons. So in fact, even there's a couple gentlemen that were 56, you guys still have 20 years to get ready for your first <laughs> full marathon. So, um, and part of this is at UC San Diego, we're capable of an amazing things. We probably can't get every 92-year-old able to run a full 26-mile marathon. But what we can do is try to set up programs to increase the percentage of seniors that can move about with confidence and with comfort. And this is just to illustrate that uh, Ms. Thompson is not alone. So every day, 10,000 baby boomers turn 65. Every day. So that means in the course of this hour, an average of 417 baby boomers have turned 65, which is double the amount of people in this room. So this is an uh, inordinate number of people that we're gonna have to find creative means of caring for and, and activating. And one of those means is by using creative means of using medications in a safe and effective way. And so we've demonstrated in multiple studies the leading killers are chronic diseases. Virtually all of them are treated with medications and the availability of medications is indeed improving. And we're seeing that when patients are taking their medications effectively, we reduce hospitalizations, we reduce health services use. Some of the work that I've done, we've looked at when they don't have access to necessary medications and they double their risk of ED likelihood of an ED visit as well as their costs. So there's a lot of people that we're trying to do something with in terms of medications. But the challenge with seniors is uh, these baby boomers that are converting, they are on a lot of medications. So when we were doing medication therapeutic management, going to assisted livings and skilled nursing facilities in the San Diego area and meeting with them and reviewing their medications, on average they were, if we included their as needed medications, so the ones they take every once in a while when they need it, they were on 14 unique medications. So 14, so if you think about it in a waking day, you're, you're awake 16 hours, they theoretically be taking a different medication every hour. And that actually even obscures some of the complexity because they're taking many of these more than one time a day. And when we're talking about seniors, we're talking with 14 medications, that's the opportunity for drug-drug interactions, adverse events, and in fact, even some of the benefits of drugs when you're looking, dealing with the senior population and they're on that number of medications, you can get things like we call it orthostasis when they're taking their blood pressure medication, senior gets up and they feel that lightheadedness that can increase the risk of falls. A couple of these others that we think of for falls is benzodiazepines, so we think about uh, Ativan or Valium, things that people take for, for anxiety or for temazepam for sleep. That could also increase the re risk of falls. And of course, the one that's kind of the poster child right now is uh, Ambien. And they've looked at that in one in every five times that a senior has an adverse drug event that puts them in the ER, it's due to Ambien. So if we could just find better ways of looking at these medications and finding ways to reduce the risk of falls. Why are we so interested in reducing the risk of falls? It's because we have to be. It's the number one cause of death and hospital admissions due to injury in people over 65. So if we can find ways, creative ways, 
using uh, clinical pharmacy to reduce this risk, we're going to get an outside share reduction in hospitalization, death, disability, and cost. Every time, uh, on average, a hospital, a hospital admission due to a fall averages about $26,000. So this is a, a massive amount that we're trying to deal with. So what are we doing in terms of clinical pharmacy? We recently received an $876,000 grant to do geriatric workforce enhancement program training at the Division of Geriatrics to work on this problem. And so uh, this is UC San Diego. We do novel, innovative things. So if you think that thing in the glass case is neat, check out this. We meet with the senior and we look at their meds. And so what's happening is, what we're finding out is there's a lot of other things we can do, and we, I've done them all. I mean, I'm, trained, I'm a, a statistician trained in data analysis. So when we, when we get, when we look at their medications through their insurance claims or through their medical records, those things actually miss a lot of things. When patients pay, when they don't pay a copay, when they pay cash, that doesn't go in their health insurance record. When they go and they get an herbal supplement or they get an OTC, which also can have drug-drug interactions, that doesn't go on that record. When we get the medication list from their specialists and providers, you'll be amazed how they don't match. And so what we're trying to do is when we can get them in the room with all their medications, and oftentimes we'll actually go to their residence and find out that there's other medications. When we go find their, the medications they tell us about, we find a whole other box. And you ask them about those, and they're always like, oh yeah, I take those just once in a while though. Don't worry about those. So we bring those with us. So, and then importantly in this graphic is we actually have to try to hear it from the patient perspective. You need to find out why they're taking it, what they're taking it, what they think of it, and how it originated. We're trying to do this thing called self-management and patient activation. If we can get them involved in their decision making, many studies have shown that we get improved outcomes. And we have fewer people to take care of them than we ever had in history. So, and then we talk to them about their medications and we try to design a medication action plan with them. And it doesn't stop here. In fact, after this one, we'll go to an interdisciplinary team with caregivers and we'll, or care providers. We'll speak with them about that patient and try to design an action plan that works with them. But again, we're trying to get them involved in steering their own care. So why are we doing all this? There, there's an array, there's about 15 of us who are involved in this grant. Um, and it's more than just for us, that it's, it's more than just trying to take care of, of frail adults or trying to make sure that they enjoy their last moments. It's because we are seeing now, with all the technology that we have available, that people are in some of the best moments of their lives actually take, take place in these latter years. And so at UC San Diego Health, I think if we're, we're trying to find ways that if there's any way we can promote or nurture that to allow these things to unfold, that's what we're committed to at uh, UC, UC San Diego Health Sciences. And really quickly, I have to do one dedication. There's a good friend of mine, uh, Renee, who is defeating cancer as we speak. So I'd like to dedicate this to my good friend. But I will be excited to take questions after this.